Afternoon, VC. All right, uh, I thought I'd share what has come in this uh, maybe week and a half or so. Um, I got a package here from uh, Rob at the Waxed. Um, he was kind enough to, um, I guess, put this in my pile um, a while back, and I was able to pick it up from him at a really good price. Um, this is a hard record to find, and it can be it can be expensive when you do. Um, and it's a great addition to my ESP disc collection. Um, I've been trying to get all the jazz titles in the first 100. Um, there are quite a few. I, not too many left that I need, and this was one of them. Uh, this is Patty Waters' college tour um, on ESP disc. And we'll show you the record. Um, this one's probably a VG copy. Um, which is fine by me with the free jazz stuff. Um, a lot of the surface noise gets overpowered, and I also used my groove washer kit and really dug into this one and cleaned it up good. Um, sounds sounds okay. Um, Patty Waters, some pretty intense out there avant free vocals. A bunch of pianists on this uh, that on the different tracks. So you've got Rand Blake on some of this, you've got uh, Dave Burrell on some of this, you've got Burton Green on some of this. Um, Giuseppe Logan's on all the tracks on flute um, and is great on this. A um, couple, couple bassists, um, which makes it a little heavier. Um, yeah, excellent one for the ESP disc free jazz collection. Um, not a whole lot I need left. Maybe I'll find a few in New York. Um, got a couple from his auction, too. I had never won any of his auctions. Um, so that, this was, this was a great one to get, um, for my Sunrock collection. Um, I passed on this a few times at conventions in town. There's one in town today. I uh, wish I was up for getting out and about. I'm still, uh, battling being in and out of the hospital a little, uh, so, um, but this is Angels and Demons at Play from Sun Ra and his Myth Science Orchestra. Um, yeah, I think recorded back in the 50s when they were in Chicago still. Yeah, 55 through 57. Um, John Gilmore on tenor, Pat Patrick on baritone, Marshall Allen on alto, Ronnie Boykin's bass, Julian Priester trombone, uh, Phil Coran's on trumpet on this. Um, great. Chicago uh, musician um, and his records are really really uh, desirable um, and expensive so this this is a great session I think this wasn't um, released until po possibly 73 I'm not I'm not sure on that um, there might have been El Saturn originals prior but I, I'm not I'm not 100% it was transferred and remastered in November of 73 but anyway um, also was then reissued by Impulse as one of the El Saturn titles they were able to get a hold of and change the cover art. Um, and I think that's why uh, Rob sold this one. He had gotten the Impulse title. Great tracks on this. Um, happy to get this into the collection. Um, this is the 2014 series they did. Um, and some of these can be warped. I have found them warped at conventions, so I've passed on them. And it's not an expensive record, but this one's in really nice shape. I kind of try to duplicate the Saturn label. Um, I remember when uh, Roger Coleman, who I actually spoke to the other day, um, got a hold of all these. He, he bought every single one of the 2014 uh, reissues and did a video on it. Um, that's really what piqued my interest in Sun Ra. He was doing the Sun Ra Sundays, too, and that kind of kicked everything off for me many, many years ago. So I got to thank Roger for that. But it was actually my brother, though, that he wanted me to check out, I think, Astro Black or one of those records one Christmas, he told me. And then uh, seeing Roger's video as the wheels were turning. Um, also on this one, uh, Lee Morgan Taru. This is the original pressing. Um... This is an interesting lineup, because it's got Benny Maupin on tenor, George Benson guitar, who just kind of doesn't fit, but John Hicks piano, Reggie Workman bass, and Billy Higgins drums. 
Um, I dig it. It's later. It's later Lee Morgan. Um, one of these sessions that never saw the light of day for a while. 1968. Uh, Coop Schooner released these, um, and I always dig these these uh, sessions. Um, and this is now a tone poet, and everybody goes crazy for the tone poets. Um, I'm not one that cares about picking any of those up. Um, I don't know why. I just I have maybe one or two. Um, that's it. I don't. I don't know. I have. I have so many blue notes that I just don't. I don't really need to spend forty, forty-one dollars after tax for a tone poet. Um, Richard Byrick Hubris. This was in the package. This is some VCLT from Rob. So I really appreciate this. Uh, some solo piano. This would be good evening listen. Um, this is cool because it's a uh, stamped promo copy and a white label ECM which are always cool to get. Promo copy not for sale. In really nice shape, um, so that'll be good. Um, I have a few other buyer records that I dig that are here in the collection, so this would be a nice addition. Um, had a couple records to pick up for Jason the Hackman out in uh, California uh, from Dylan. Um, I had forgotten to get them at the sale, so I went back that Sunday and picked them up for him and was able to look in the bins I c didn't get a chance to because it's just too crowded in there on that Saturday. So that Sunday I went through those bins just to see what was had survived, and I'm always surprised that some great records survive his big sale because there's so many people in there. This was still there. I couldn't believe it. Fear more beer. Um, a 1985 original pressing. There's two two pressings from this 1985. One with the silver instead of black, and that's really the only difference. Um, so yeah, this is what on Restless Records. Lee Vang, great front man. This is a killer punk band from the LA scene back in the mid '80s. Um, Circle Jerks, Black Flag, all that, that whole scene. Um, excellent, excellent shit and hard to find. So I was very stoked to get that. Uh, I'll show you the record. It was really good price. There's your label. Looks like a custom label. This is in excellent condition. Fucking badass band. And then this, I had actually seen this in one of the side tables in one of the boxes, and I passed on it um, just because I, ha I have the reissue, but um, I checked it out again, and it's in such good shape, and it's an original, so I picked it up. Fela and Africa 70 Zombie, it's a OG US from, what, 1977, I think. And, yeah, one of the best Fela records, and to have a nice... Uh, early copy is great. Um, awesome. And that was cheap. That was like 30 bucks. So I, I picked it up. Um, maybe, maybe it was a little more than 30 It wasn't 40 It was somewhere in between, maybe. Um, this guy's records are getting reissued um, out of Argentina. I couldn't believe it. Um, had a few on the want list for a few years when I got into the Brazilian stuff and the Chilean stuff and some of the Argentinian stuff. Um, and they're six to $800 records all day. Um, a lot of them are all, impossible to find anywhere outside of Argentina or Brazil. Mostly are in Argentina, and I sending that kind of money down there. Who knows if you're going to get it. Discogs, who knows if you're going to get it. Um, but Bronco Buenos Aires from Jorge Lopez Ruiz, Alter Cat's putting these out. It's like 20 some bucks. This is an incredible record. Um, spoke Some spoken word style vocals, protest vocals, but uh, they're, it's, not in, it's not in English. Um, the music is incredible on this. It's, it's kind of like if Arthur Verakai and David Axelrod got together and threw down. Freaking, the, the horns on this are incredible. The, the whole group. This is, this is top-notch shit. 
um, hence the price for an OG. Awesome record. Um, and then I picked up, I think, four records from Lunchbox. Two were basically pre-orders, um, stuff that, one that, um, Scott set aside for me, he set aside the others too, so I might need to get them later, but, um, the three Joe McPhee's that got reissued recently on a Superior Viaduct, so I picked this one up to start with, Joe McPhee, Black Magic Man, um, yeah, it was originally on Hat Hut out of Switzerland, um, kind of a pricey original, probably cost after shipping about 150 or so, um, you might find one a little less, but, uh, Joe McPhee's on Tenor and Soprano, and it's the same lineup that's on Nation Time, so this was, the, this was the title that, uh, stuck out to me the most of the reissues that I wanted to pick up, 1975, and Superior Viaduct does a great job with these reissues. I'm looking forward to spinning this. Um, it's got a little, just a little write-up, little insert on the on the ish, on the release. And it's a nice pressing, really solid piece of vinyl. So yeah, happy those got reissued because I just have I've, I've it's just the hat hut stuff I've really never pulled the trigger on. You have to get a lot of it from Switzerland or France or something like that. And so, yeah, very cool. This uh, Maddie who works at the lunchbox, she put this in my hands. I had actually ordered the one that came out prior to this, and they just can't get it. For some reason, Warp hasn't reissued anything, or when they ran out, they ran out. And so I was happy to pick this one up. Uh, broadcast Collected Demos 2000-2006, Distant Call. Um, I really like this. I've spun this twice already. Um, and it's interesting, the last song on the album, um, basically there was a Let's Write a Song project with fans. So the fans got to send the band the lyrics, and she ended up using the lyrics in that song. It's called Please Call the Book. Um, it's a little bit repetitive in the vocals, but it's it's a good song. Um, the guitar on this is really, really good. Um, kind of sparse acoustic throughout. Um, with her, go her gorgeous vocals on this. Um, really, really good. Um, Trish Keenan on vocals and James Cargill on guitar. Um... Reminds me of uh, Maria Rhodes from Spain, even though Maria's singing in Catalan, um, and Trish is singing in English, but they have the similar soft voice, like the voice of an angel, freaking awesome, um, really well-written songs, and these are just the demos, um, so yeah, I need to get some more broadcast, that's excellent, um, and then I picked this up. It's a goofing reissue of a Sonic Youth a Thousand Leaves, one of my favorite Sonic Youth records. It's a double LP. Originally it came out in 98. I have the C I got the CD when it came out in 98. Um, I love this freaking record. Um, Wildflower Soul is such a killer song. Nine minutes long. Um, so many good songs on this. Sunday, the second song, is a great song. Um... Yeah, some of my some of my favorites for sure. So that was I finally got that on vinyl. Um, and then I always go through the seven inches at Lunchbox, as you know, and I always find one. This was cool because it's a jukebox single from '96 of the John Spencer Blues Explosion. Get with it on the A side, and uh, down low on the B side, on in the red recordings, um, in perfect shape. And I did not have this, and I collect anything John Spencer Blues Explosion, one of my favorite bands of all time, who I've seen a couple of times. Um, very cool. So that's all that came in this week. I'm um, looking forward to seeing what Art finds today at the Charlotte Convention. I uh, wish I felt good enough to get out, but uh, maybe I'll get out there in December when it comes back. Hope you're well. Peace.